Hello everyone. For this video, we are going to discuss how to write your conceptual framework. What is conceptual framework? A conceptual framework is a written or visual presentation that explains either graphically or in narrative form. The main things studied, you have the key factors, concepts or variables, and the presumed relationships among them. This definition of Miles and Huberman in 1994 gives us the idea that when we present our work for the conceptual framework, it can be in graphical form. According to McGaggy et al. in 2001, he defined or they defined conceptual framework as a set of stage or sets the stage for the presentation of the particular research question that drives the investigation being reported based on the problem statement. So in this uh, definition of Bakgagi and his co-workers, they define conceptual framework as the stepping stone or the guide where the research is anchored to the research problem. But according to Bordage, conceptual framework represents way of thinking about a problem. Take note, way of thinking about the problem or a study or way of representing how complex things are. So in short, the conceptual framework will make our complex ideas look like simple. In other words, we may say that conceptual framework is like a lighthouse. It guides us on the path where we should be. Let us take note that the conceptualization part of the research process might well be called the thinking part of the research, while the factual part of the research process is more related to the doing aspect. Preparing a conceptual framework can be likened to a planning a holiday. Yung tipong magbabakasyon tayo, pupunta tayo sa beach, pupunta tayo sa Baguio. On this type of uh, holidays that we plan, we need to know what should be the purpose of doing our holidays. So in doing the research, as we look into on how we prepare your conceptual frameworks, we need to plan. And planning this is the best way on coming up with the best guide that we are going to use. So in if we are going to look into or uh, um, compare it to a holiday, we need to look into the purpose of preparing or pre-planning for the holidays that we are going to have. So we need to know how to get to and return from our holiday destination. So in research, we need to know how to get to and return onto our research problem. Kailangan makita natin kung saan tayo papunta at makita natin ang daan, pabalik, kung paano natin sasagutin ang ating research problem. In knowing the purpose of pre-planning, we are going to know what to do when you are at our destination. Para malaman natin kung ano ang gagawin natin kapag nandun na tayo sa isang part ng ating research. We are doing the conceptual framework para malaman natin kung ano na ang susunod na ating mga gagawin. Kung baga sa ating holiday, meron tayong itinerary. Dito tayo pupunta, anong gagawin natin dito? Di ba? To be prepared or to be better prepared and be able to make the most of our holidays because you can be guided by your previous experiences and by any information provided by others. So if we are already guided on what to do, we have a certain framework, we have a certain guide that will make the path clearer. Parang ang lighthouse, di ba? 
will make clearer the path. Hindi tayo mabubunggo. Hindi tayo malulubak. Hindi tayo mababangga sa ating pupuntahan. At alam natin kung ano ang ating gagawin. Conceptual framework should cover the following. Number one, the establishment of the tentative relationships between the dependent and independent variables. Since we are not yet started our research experiment or the conduction of data gathering, we shall have only the tentative relationship. Diba nga sa hypothesis, we have our tentative answer. Now, in the conceptual framework, it should cover the tentative relationship means that it should cover our hypothesis. And then, another thing that the conceptual framework should cover is the assumption and the relationships of variables and the possible answers to the research questions. Posibling sagot sa ating mga tanong na re-resolva sa ating problema. There are three main purposes of conceptual framework. Number one, identify relevant variables. Number two, define the variables. And number three, have an idea of analysis. These are the three main concepts or main purposes of conceptual framework. But according to Professor Roger Vagan in 2008, he defined, he stated rather that the purpose of conceptual framework are the following. Number one, the conceptual framework should have the ability to move beyond description to explanation of why and how. We go beyond. The, the graphics itself is an explanation on what is the research is all about. It, uh, conceptual framework is a means of setting out an explanation set that might be used to determine and make sense of the data flow. And then we have third, filtering tool for selecting appropriate research questions and related data collection methods. Since alam mo na kung saan ka papunta, kung ano yung target mo, you will know what tools, what data collection methods you are going to use. It is also a reference point or structure for discussion or literature, methodology, and results. And number five, conceptual framework identifies the boundaries of work. Since we already discussed scopes and the limitation, we can provide already where should be the research is. Now, if you are asking, what is the difference between conceptual framework and theoretical framework? From the origin, the conceptual framework were created or was created through a variety of conceptual and theoretical perspective. While on the other hand, the theoretical framework was adapted from existing theory. In the conceptual meaning, the conceptual framework is, has or has synthesis of rele relevant concepts, while the theoretical framework applies the theory as a whole or as a part. The underlying process for conceptual framework is inductive, while the theoretical framework, it is deductive. Let's look into on how we develop conceptual framework. Number one, we identify the relevant concepts. Number two, we define the concepts that we are going to use. And number three, we operate, operate relationalize our concepts. Kagamitin natin ang ating concepts. Number four, we identify and moderate or intervene the variables. And number five, we identify the relationship between the variables that we have. Now that we know how to do the conceptual framework, let's look on 
the different forms. Ano ba ang iba't ibang itsura? Ano ba ano ba yung pwede nating gawing na conceptual framework? So these forms of conceptual framework will vary depending on what you wanted to have. So we have this form, conceptual framework as a flow chart. Pwede na natin siyang tawagin na sequential diagram. So you will notice that it will start from one and to the end point. Ibig sabihin, there's a start and there is a finish. There is an input. Therefore, there will be a process and an output. So it's a flow chart, a sequential diagram. So in this example, you can notice that from the knowledge, then we have the persuasion, decision, implementation, confirmation as channels of communication. So under that, there are different concepts underlying on this key concepts. And the author of this, Rogers, Rogers in 2003, used a flowchart to identify the concepts needed on his research. When we say conceptual diagram, it's similar to the flowchart. Here, you have the subdomains of your main concepts as an initial or an input concept, and you will come up with an output concept. Let's have this example. So you have your key concepts, socioeconomic status, knowledge, and awareness, and then you have attitudes. So the outcome of this might be the lifestyle, diseases such as diabetes and or hypertension. Another form of conceptual framework is that we have as a T or sorry, a tree chart. So there is a main concept and then there are underlying concepts that we are going to use. Now, another conceptual framework is a mind map. So we have here a main concept, one main concept, and there are other subconcepts and these subconcepts are interrelated with one another. Just like this one. So this our main concept we have under nutrition and then you have other subconcepts that are interrelated with one another. Another form of conceptual framework is that we have an overlapping domains. So this, we have domain A, B, and C. So we have this Venn diagram, a triple Venn diagram. So we have your main concept, the hair fall, and it has attributes or subdomains, genetic factor, environmental factors, and individual Factor. So, paano nagkakaroon daw ng hair fall? So, these are the factors that we may consider or the domains based on the concept map. And we have the conceptual framework as ecological model. So, you start from the individual, then it will move up on a greater relationship, family, or uh, a small community or within the household. And then you have the community, group of houses, diba? neighbors. And then you have your society where those neighbors are belong to. So here is an example. So you have your key concept, violence against women. And then you have your individual. You have your individual perpetrator. Then we are going to look into the different uh, subconcepts. Why is there uh, violence against women? What was the reason behind this? Is it individual reason? Or is it within the family, the relationship? Or is it within the community where this family is present? Or it is just the norm of the society where this community is present. 
So these are examples of how we present our conceptual frameworks. Let us take note that conceptual frameworks provide us researchers with the following, the ability to move beyond descriptions of what to explanations of why and how. We also provide a means to setting out an explanation set that might be used to define and make sense of the data that flow from the research question. And it also provides us a filtering tool for selecting appropriate research questions and related data collection methods. We also, this conceptual framework provides also us a reference point or a structure for the discussion of the literature that we are going to have, the methodology, and the results that we are going to have. And of course, lastly, the conceptual framework provides us the boundary of our work. What will be our limit, where we are going to, and what we are going to have. Thank you very much for listening and viewing. This is Conceptual Framework. I hope you learned something from this.